gonna take a quick shower. I'm getting it set up for our next meeting, which is gonna be more of a lecture on aneurysms. So it's gonna be one of the vascular surgeons lecturing us on aneurysms. By the way, yes, this is Netter. This is one of the books that I think I've used the most out of medical school. So definitely don't throw this one away. I did kind of this purging after medical school where I threw away a bunch of textbooks, which wasn't the brightest idea, especially considering the amount of money I paid for them, but it just made me feel better. This one, I did not throw away. I still use this to this day, love this. It's like the best. with the black shoes just in case there's any spillage oh, and I've got my minion socks <laughs> so I've actually got no time for lunch because we just finished up and now I have to go over to Miami for this uh, simulation lab that we have so you see this car it has like these ladders on top switch lanes because it was giving me final destination to this day since i watched that movie anything that carries longitudinally placed equipment on top of it i, I don't want to drive behind it since i'm driving down to miami right now on i-95 y'all can just pray for me because driving here is very similar to driving in mexico where road signs are optional i can say that by the way i'm mexican from jalisco to be exact I wasn't actually born there, but I pretend I was. <laughs> All I want to know is whose car fits in there. It ain't mine. Just going to drive around in circles in this parking lot until a parking space magically falls out of the sky and appears. That isn't two centimeters wide. Let me tell you guys, because it just occurred to me because I drove here, I'm in one of the parking garages in Miami and I drove past one of the big eye institutes and it just occurred to me, why didn't I become an ophthalmologist? Why did I decide to go into surgery? Because here's the question. Have you ever seen uh, an ophthalmologist that's not happy? Have you ever seen a dermatologist that's not happy? That's because they don't exist. They are all always happy. <laughs> I was under the impression that everybody was joking the whole time when I was in medical school and they were like, don't do surgery, don't do surgery. It's gonna suck. You're gonna be working all the time. It's, you know, people are not very nice there and blah, blah, blah. And just, no. Nope. What? I didn't hear that. <laughs> Did you? I'd have been a great dermatologist. Not gonna lie, I think I would've made a pretty good ophthalmologist too. They seem like cool people. I'm put on my white coat. Now we have these simulations a couple times a year. We basically go to a simulation lab that's equipped with laparoscopic equipment, robotic equipment, all kinds of different things that we can kind of use to learn and practice and do pretend surgeries on. <laughs> Now, this uh, simulation center is not at our institution, but we do go down there a few times a year and we use a simulation center. It's very nicely set up. They have all kinds of equipment, laparoscopic simulators, they have robotic simulators that we can work on. And so all of this is to prepare us for our FLS exams, our different minimally invasive kind of benchmark exams that we have during residency so that we're able to complete those and you know become board certified surgeons as well as prove that we are trained in these minimally invasive approaches. Okay, so I'm in like panic mode right now. I grabbed something really quick at the Avon Pond that's like right outside of the place where we had our simulation. And now I have to run out of here and run to my child's daycare because they called me because there is a lice emergency. <laughs> this is not, this is not it. <laughs> Okay, finally made it home after the very interesting day I've had today. 
Let me tell you guys a little bit about kind of the different things that we learn as surgeons in training and why we have these simulation days to begin with. Back in the day, surgery used to pretty much all be open, meaning that it was maximally invasive, meaning if you're having surgery, you're probably gonna have a sizable incision. And that's how the surgery was done. In recent years, it's actually been going on for a while now, but I think it's becoming more commonplace nowadays um, to use minimally invasive approaches. What that means is laparoscopy or robotics. No, no, no. This is what we're currently doing. <laughs> We, as surgeons in training, are being trained to do not only open surgery, but open, also open, so. <laughs> laparoscopic and robotic open, surgery. Open the so. I don't know what she's talking about. Uh, we're learning to do op open, open laparoscopic and open, robotic. Open, open.